Okay. Uh, so in that last video, uh, we proved these uh, four co-function identities. I've kind of rearranged them a little bit here. Uh, hopefully you'll see why later. Uh, but what I want to do in this video is talk about how those uh, trig identities are related to the graphs of sine and cosine. Uh, so sine is the one that starts at zero, and then it just starts going you know, up and to the right, up, down, up, down. And cosine, uh, you know, honestly, they're, it's pretty obvious how similar looking they are. They are the exact same function, but they're just a translation of one another. Uh, but cosine starts off at 1 and starts falling as you go to the right. Okay, and I know I'd mentioned this, uh, I had mentioned this one before, uh, but the, these negative angle identities, these are actually a real simple idea. So for cosine, so cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x. What this means is that if you go to the left, however far you want to go, the where you end up is going to be the same as if you went to the right that distance. Okay, so if I go to the left, say pi units, all right, I end up at negative one. And if I go to the right pi units, I also end up at negative one. All right, and that's going to hold true for no matter how far left or right you go. And for sine of x, all right, sine of x is the same idea, uh, except it says if you go to the left however far you want to, well, it's going to be the same answer as if you went to the right, but it's going to add on a negative to it. All right. So if I go to the left, uh, let's say I go 3 pi over 2 units right here, I land at positive 1. And if I go to the right, 3 pi over 2, I land at negative 1. I get the exact same answer, but it's just a negative of itself. It gets uh, flipped over the x-axis here. So let's look at how, uh, how these co-function identities work. So back in Algebra 1 or 2, I don't know in Algebra 2 we talked about it, uh, we had mentioned translations. So if you take a, uh, if you take and add a minus 90 or a minus pi over 2 on the inside of the parentheses, what that's going to do is it's going to shift it to the right. So this is going to shift cosine to the right pi over 2 units. All right. Uh, well, actually, I, I guess I can't write on it this spot, unfortunately. So what this identity says is that if you go to the, if you take cosine and shift it to the right 90 degrees, you're going to land at sine. So let's uh, try that out here. So here's the graph of sine. What I'm going to do is take cosine and I'm going to shift it to the right uh, pi over two units. So to do that, I just minus pi over two units. And there you have it. This is the graph of sine. And that's the whole idea. <laughs> like, that's where I was headed. This is how I keep these functions straight. So this one says, hey, if I take cosine and shift it to the right, I get sine. Well, this function or this identity right here is saying the exact same thing, but in reverse. It says, if you take sine of that, if you take the sine function, and shift it left, you get cosine. So these are the exact same, these are saying the exact same thing about the graphs. So if you take cosine and shift it to the right, you get sine. Uh, if you take the sine function, oh, here it is. If you take the sine function and shift it to the left, pi over two units, you're going to get cosine. So to shift it to the left, you would add pi over 2 to it, like that. And it just took uh, it took this point that was here, and it moved it over so that it starts just like cosine does. Okay? So that's all, th that's all those two identities are talking about. All right? Uh, the last two, this is going to be the same idea. This one says take cosine. And if you shift it to the left, it should equal sine, but
but it's going to be the opposite of sine. It's going to be the reflection of sine uh, across the x-axis. That's what that negative part does. So let's look at that. Cosine of x plus 90. All right, so there's sine of x. And here's going to be cosine. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to do x plus 90 to it, which is going to shift it to the left. All right, so x plus 90. Oh, <laughs> pi over 2. Yeah, it does most is different. So instead of it, instead of it starting like sine, where sine goes up and then down, you know, over and over, uh, it's it's taking those values, it's taking like these values, and it's flipping them. So this is the exact same graph of sine of x, but it's a reflection of it, right? So if you take cosine and shift it to the left, you get the reflection of sine. And over here, it's the same thing. It says, if you take if you take sine of x and scoot it over to the right, you're going to get the reflection of cosine. These are the, you know, you can't have one without the other. They are saying the exact same thing. So take sine of x. All right. Instead of shifting it to the left to get exactly cosine, I'm going to shift it to the right. All right. And if I shift it to the right, what I get is a reflection of cosine. So instead of starting at positive one, it's going to start off at negative one. All right, you get the yeah, you get the exact same graph as cosine, but a reflection of itself. And that's the idea. Like, I I don't try to keep all of these identities uh, fresh or memorized. You know, they're written in a book somewhere. Uh, but it's real easy to kind of drum them up on the fly. Uh, if you remember your your algebra two translation rules, so that's all I was trying to get out of these uh, out of these little identity videos was that there is a ninety degree uh, relationship between a function and its cofunction, whether it's a translation, whether it's a reflection, they are related intimately. Like you can't you can't get around that like they you can always express one in terms of the other so that was the that was sine and cosine these are all all these same relationships are going to hold true for uh, secant and cosecant and cotangent and cotangent so, all right that's uh that's it